And welcome back to another 2016 Taking Back Your Life Google Hangout series. My name is Clark Garrison. As you know, many of you may or may not know, I am the host of The Conversation, which is on the Survival Radio Network, where we inspire, motivate, and educate listeners worldwide. However, on this platform, Taking Back Your Life Google Hangout series, I've decided to do something a little different than what we do on our show. On this program, we are talking about health and wellness, but we're doing it from a perspective that is out of box thinking and ideologies and practices. So you guys who've been covering this from start to finish know that we've talked about vibrational energies, holistic medicine uh, to uh, astrology. But tonight or today, we've got a very, very good uh, 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 um, I was going to say client, but it's not a client yet. Yeah, we'll have her on radio show and then she'll be one. But uh, a speaker who does uh, some phenomenal stuff in an area where I really, really wanted to cover. So let me introduce our guest. He is the creator of the platform Feels Like Home, a feng shui and space clearing service. Please join me in welcoming from the West Coast, the one and only Miss Maya Lynn Robinson in the house. What's going on, Maya? Hi, good morning, Clark. How are you? It's still morning for me. I know that's what's throwing me off. I, I want to say day and afternoon, but I keep forgetting you're on the West Coast, so it's early. It was relatively early for you. Yeah. Well, yeah, welcome. Uh, Thank this is you. the first time you and I are are meeting, uh, and uh, I am so glad that I get to have you on my radio show a little later on in the month. But today we're going to talk about your specialty, one of your specialties, feng shui. Mm -hmm. So without further yeah. ado, um, let's, let's start at the beginning. I always like our, our listeners to know exactly uh, a little bit about you and your journey. So how were you made aware uh, of this ancient practice we call feng shui? You know what's so funny? Um, I kind of knew about it as a kid. I kind of have always wanted to have spaces that were free and clear of clutter. So I've always been interested in understanding why I feel better when my space is clean and clear of clutter. But I didn't really look into uh, the importance of feng shui until I moved to California in 2012. Uh, I was looking, I was subletting, and I was living in different people's spaces for my first year here. And when you go into different people's space, you feel a different energy in it. Sometimes I felt comfortable in the space, sometimes I felt unwelcomed in the space. And I had a friend who was doing feng shui and I was actually staying with him and I saw all the benefits of what was going on with his life. So I said, when I get my own apartment here, I am going to practice feng shui and see what it kind of does for me. That's kind of how I got into it is I dabble. Well, um, welcome to Cali, by the way. I say that because I, I am a Californian native, so I feel like I should welcome you, even though I'm in Atlanta, Georgia now. <laughs> so I threw uh, away all my boots and my winter coats. <laughs> yeah, you don't need those. Um, so let's do this. Give give our audience, um, I guess, a layman's definition of feng shui. What does it mean? Feng shui is the First of all, energy can never be destroyed, right? It can only be manipulated and, and changed from one entity to another. So the importance of feng shui is to not get rid of energy, but it is to change an energy that might be stagnant or negative into something that is a positive, efficient, healthy energy for your environment that you do based upon either making sure that your home is set up properly uh, structurally or proper furniture placement in your space. So sometimes how you have your furniture, it can close off energy from you or it can open up energy to you. So it's about changing the energy from stagnant or negative and turning into something positive and healthy. It's so kind of it, like Reiki for your home. I'm sorry, say that one more time. It's kind of like Reiki for your home. You know, like Reiki mm -hmm. when you, you know put your hands over the body and you heal. It's kind of like you're doing that for a home. Understood. That's a, okay. I, I definitely can relate to that. Um, just, I, I know the answer to this, but I want to make sure because 
I, I never want to assume that people understand or know about uh, any one particular thing, especially the, the topics we're, we're covering. Um, who does Feng Shui work for? Is it for anyone and everyone? Is it for any size house? Is it for uh, anywhere in, uh, in the world? Uh, or does it fit a narrative? Feng Shui works for everyone, even if you don't believe it. And that's the great thing about energy right it, it, and feng shui in this practice in general it can work in a studio space it can work in 10 square feet all the way to 10,000 square feet it doesn't matter it doesn't even matter if you believe it as long as there is somebody who's putting positive intention into your home and changing the energy you have no choice but to change because it, it is always working for you whether you're believing in it or not wow. and i know that sounds like a really weird answer but it's a powerful thing well, with that, with, with that definition, could you then explain how the flow of energy in, one, in one's home can directly affect the energy in your body? Absolutely. So um, a great example of that would be cords and technology and things of that nature. Everyone has um, cell phones and chargers and laptops and chargers and desktops and TVs and radios and when there's a bunch of clutter in technology, technology creates and sends off energy waves as well. So if everything is kind of tangled and jarbled, then, and also not cleaned, right? You never sweep on the floor by all of your cords and things of that nature. The energy is just going to be stagnant in this one spot. And because there's all this different technology and it's all garbled, it doesn't really give you a release. It doesn't really give you a sense of calm or structure. If you take all of those cords that you have working together, like in a home office or in a, a entertainment space, and you put all the cords together and you tie them together and you sweep the floor and you just mop the, the area around it, the energy automatically feels, for lack of a better phrase, light or crisp or concentrated. So the hard thing about explaining feng shui is I can explain it to you, but it works best in just having the practice happen to you. Does that make sense? Just trying Absolutely. to implement the smallest of change. If you have a bunch of things on your dining room table, you know, a lot of times people have things on their dining room table because you only have, you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter for those really big family meals. So you just kind of put everything your dining room table becomes a catch-all. Right. If you just took everything off of your dining room table and just had fresh flowers on top of it, it doesn't even have to be decorated with, you know, um, plates and stuff if you're not going to use it. You will walk into that space and you will feel differently about walking into that space, about how that space and you relate. Wow. It sounds very new age and hippy-dippy. Um. <laughs> I've always wanted to ask someone who practiced feng shui and knew more about it than I do. I'm, I think I'm a layman at it, um, but I, I get the principles. Um, how effective is an area or your home when you add organic elements to it, like plants or um, pets, um, whether that's a fish tank or whether that's actually a, a pet, a dog or cat or something like that? Um, or water uh, flowing in it. I mean, how do those elements, those organic elements, uh, affect the energy flow of the, for lack of a better word, a stagnant, um, you know, house? <laughs> That's a really good question. It affects it because it naturally doubles the prosperous energies. So if you mm -hmm. put a plant, right, it's a living and breathing thing, it's something that you get something from it and it gets something from you, right? So plants, trees, things of that nature, it's a living and breathing organism. So it's carrying that energy around. And a lot of times if you have like plants that smell well, like uh, lilies, stargazer lilies and things of that nature, it can enhance the aroma of the home as well, which makes it even better. Fish tanks, um, are really good for the home as well. Moving water features are really good, except for, of course, in your bathroom, unless you're taking a shower or using the bathroom, and not in your bedroom. A fish tank really isn't so good 
in your bedroom because you need to have that place that can be quiet and calm. And a fish tank is always moving water. So it's always moving energy. And sometimes in that bedroom, that's that place of rest and relaxation. So placement of um, fish, placements of water, placements of plants are fantastic in doubling your energy. Cats and dogs, they're just great companions to have, but um, I don't necessarily believe that there are feng shui principles for them. I guess what I would say for the feng shui principles of a cat and a dog are make sure you take care of their dander and their litter so that it doesn't leave, um, you know, especially cats with litter boxes, it doesn't leave that ammonia or odor in the air. And um, dog hair and cat hair that's strewn everywhere can, when laid dormant, can see negative or stagnant energy present. So just be mindful when you have pets. Excellent. Excellent. Now, now um, what I want to um, do, what I want to do next, next is you need your feedback. I'm hearing feedback. I am not hearing feedback. Well, that's funky. All right, I think it went away. Okay. <laughs> that's all this energy over here. Okay, so I know I was going to say that I was going to be like maybe it's the energy. So I want to take because I I was nosy and I, I went on your site and I saw that there is a process or a system that you yeah. go by when when you take a client and you analyze their their home uh in the practice of feng shui so for kicks uh do you mind if i kind of take you through those step by steps and just give a like a a recap or uh what those steps uh mean and what you do in them yeah you want to go one by one through the steps yeah, so 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 I'll call them out, and you just kind of tell me what it is you're doing and what's the point. Okay. So uh, the first stage that you start uh, uh, in in this whole process is the prep. So tell us what what that involves. So the prep is for all those people that are sitting on the fence that don't know if necessarily feng shui is real or if I'm legitimate or if they want to spend any money on it. I like to meet the person immediately and kind of uh, get, walk them through a small little quiz just to kind of figure out what areas of their life they're looking to improve and enhance. And that's what that intake form is all about. I ask you very specific questions that are yes or no so that we can find out of the, the feng shui literally translates into um, eight areas. And there are eight areas of your life to be taken care of. The wealth and prosperity, family reputation, family relationships. Um, then there's health and community. Then there's creativity and children. Then there's knowledge and wisdom, career, and helpful people, spirituality, and travel. So there are eight areas. I know I said about 12 names, but I can break that down to you and what it looks like in the back one. And I need to figure out what areas those are and then when i do get that floor plan of your home then i'll know what areas i need to be more uh concerned about activating for lack of a better word so that takes us to the second part um great transition uh the energy blueprint part of bagua so um in this as you're analyzing these eight different areas uh and i, I assume this is something that you would do outside of the home um mm -hmm. prior to going there right Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. you've already had a consultation. You you know what what they're what they're trying to um, achieve by going through this process. What means more to them, I guess. Um, what is it that can help define an area that needs, in your eyes, improvement? Like, what is it that what would what? Give me an example. What would stick out to you to say this is what's clutter? Oh, there we go. Clutter. It's the, and this is what I am not. I am not a professional organizer. Okay. So, so a, a professional organizer is someone who goes in and clears that clutter for you. I give you the map on how to clear the clutter for yourself because someone can do it for you, but you might not necessarily learn the lesson. If it's something that you're walking through yourself, you'll take better pride in the work that you've done to accomplish that clutter to keep it at bay going forward. I find that clutter is a big problem. I find that um, technological cords all mumble jumble are a big problem in going into people's homes. 
And I find out that just a lot of people don't necessarily sweep and mop their floors on a regular. So, you know, you got you to gotta sweep your floors and you got to mop your floors at least once a week so that you have clean energy and not dirt and grit from weeks and months on end. Those are the big things that I noticed first and foremost, just walking into a space. So let's move to the third, which is on site. So I'm assuming this is when you, the probably the first time that you're actually at the person's house. Right. So once we go from the first step of having that phone conversation with them and them sending me the floor plan of their home so that I can match it up with the backlog. Now I have all the information of what areas we should really focus on in their home, what their home's floor plan actually looks like. So when I walk into there, I'm not blind, right, as to what I'm walking into floor plan wise. And then I get the chance to really meet the person. When you go into a person's home, that's really when you get a sense of like who that person is. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like you walk into a person's home and you're like, okay, I know who you are now. And and, And so when you know what people's tastes are, when you know, um, you can personalize that feng shui report. That's why I do an on-site. It's kind of mandatory. I can give people a random, these are things that you can do for cures and tips and tricks of your home of a feng shui report, but I want to give a personal. These are the things you specifically want to do, and that's why we need that on-site, normally one to two hour evaluation. And then from there, you take this information and the next part is your report part. What does that encompass and what are you, what information are you then giving to the client? Okay, so the report is anywhere between like nine and 15 pages long. Um, it's their own personalized, customized report. It has their bag wall with their floor plan on top of it so that they understand what I'm doing. And then I go room by room. What are the magical numbers? What are the the elements, right? There are the five elements. There's water, metal, um, wood, earth, things of that nature. And then I tell the diagnosis. When we work in this space, it is to energize these areas of your life. And then I give cures. So now that I have pictures, when I go to the consultation, I also take pictures of people's space. So then I have the pictures to say, hey, in this room, these are the things that you should focus on. Have black and blue accents, clear the clutter here, do this and that, put up artwork that reflects this. And it's all tailored, it's all personalized for them, but not personalized to the point that they don't feel that they're putting their own finishing touches on it. Because people want to feel a part of the process and need to feel a part of the process sometimes to change the energy in their lives. Well, it's like what you said, if you're not part of the process, there's no learning going on. Then it's just going to continue to be a problem. Absolutely. If you're not a part of the process, it will continue to be a problem. It's like like having a maid come over and clean your house. Exactly. You know, and and it's like it only gets done on Saturdays. And it's like, (laughs) no, ma'am, like the dishes need to be done every day. You know what I mean? Like, no, you can't just let it pile up for a week and then she'll take care of it. Like, you're not learning. Right. So, and then you begin to take pride in your home and then you take pride in yourself because you walk into your space and you feel differently. So then you feel differently, you think differently, you speak differently, you react differently, you live differently. And that's what feng shui does. So what's space clearing about? Okay. So after you've, This is what I I make sure my clients do. I don't come back to your house for a follow-up evaluation until you tell me that you have done the necessary changes that you need to for your home. Then a space clearing is almost kind of like a blessing of intention, what Mm. it is that you want for that space, for that home. Um, A lot of times people go by the bagua. So say your bedroom is in your wealth and prosperity area of your home. You would go into um, the bedroom. There's a whole process. There's there's bells involved. There's clapping involved. There's candles involved. There's sandalwood involved. There's sage involved. It's a lot of different things. But ultimately, at the end, with the sage, you are talking about your intention. And if it's in the wealth and prosperity area of your room or of your home, you might say, 
Um, universe, I want to make sure that you're hearing me. I want to be prosperous and successful in everything that I do. Things of that nature as we're saging your space. Or if you want to use it in the traditional um, and not in the Western feng shui, then it's your bedroom and you just say, I want this to be a place of repose, of sleep, of relaxation, of whatever it is, whatever your intention is, we sage and space clear around the room all the stagnant, negative energy and people from our lives. And then it manifests itself and turns itself into something positive. It's so hard to explain feng shui sometimes. I think about other people who have tried to explain it. And most of the time, it's through the reactions of experiencing it the first time. But that's what space clearing really is. It's, it's once you've organized all the clutter from your space, repurposing the energy for what you want, what your needs are. So um, let's go back and go, I like to call it going down the rabbit hole where we, where we, we, we get down to the, the nuts and bolts of ideology. So could you go back and you talked about saging. I'm a big proponent of saging a home. I should do it more often, which is my first yes, question. Sir. How often to, do you sage a home, even after you've come in and, and done the initial ceremony? As often as you need it. If you feel you need it, you probably need it. A lot of times people need it when they have big life changes, right? When there's death of some way, shape, or form of a person, of a marriage or a relationship, of a... Um, when you're looking for transformation in terms of love or, or career or um, and especially when you move into or out of a space or someone else moves into or out of your space. So there's not necessarily a timeline. I like to do little meaningful stages once a week on Sundays, but you can do it as often or as little as you need. You'll feel it. You'll feel it enough. You, if you have to ask your, yourself the question, should I sage? You probably need to sage. <laughs> Good point. You probably need it. Good point. So um, <laughs> I want to let the audience who's listening know I just turned on the Q&A button. I apologize for not having it on sooner. But now that it is on, if you have a question for Maya Lynn, all you have to do is type in, hit the Q&A, a little screen will come up, type in your question, hit enter, and I will see it over here on my end, and I promise I'll, uh, I'll uh, give your comments. Um, so I want to do what I, the kind of questions I want to know now. We're just going to go back now, and you've given us a layout of the process. And I just want to go back and ask some um, questions that, I've had and people that I, that I told that you were going to be on said, hey, ask her about this. So cool. it's a bunch of things. So what about colors in a home? Is there a proper energy flow, positive energy flow color palette? Or can you have anything? I mean, can you have darks? Because I, I, I saw somebody that was doing the inside of their home as a dark kind of forest green. And I was like, why would they ever do that? But is is that a a no with some things and a yes with other? Um, there are certain uh, colors that energize certain areas of your home, but you can use color any way that makes you feel good, right? Okay. I wouldn't say like paint your walls black. I wouldn't say that, right? Because that's the absence of light, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not saying that you can't have your walls or screen. If it's in your health and community area of your home, that's fantastic because green is a very powerful color for that. Mm. Um, but specifically to say what, you, what you're saying, there is a such thing as an overload. So just because a specific color works well, um, I'll go back to wealth and prosperity. Purples work really good in there. That doesn't mean your entire room needs to be purple. <laughs> that means you can have either purple curtains or maybe you choose a purple light in that room or a purple rug, you know, right. for the center of that room. But you don't have to have like, you don't have to look like Prince, you know, you don't have to have like purple crushed <laughs> velvet couch and, you know, okay, purple thank you. everywhere. 
Thank you. Thank God. You're welcome. It's not a theme. You know, it's not like a theme room. Okay. Um, okay. So um, next question. Are rooms uh, or homes with majority carpet base floors any better than wood base or ceramic tile? Do any of those play a role in the energy flow of your home? Yeah, that's a really good question. Yes. Hardwood is always better, right? Because it's easier uh, or, or anything like that's like tile or hardwood, anything that you can just sweep is always better than carpet because in carpet, stagnant energy and particles and debris get stuck in there. And I don't know too many people who vacuum daily. Yeah. So I would say that if you have the opportunity to have hardwood floors and you have multiple floors, make sure that you at least have your hardwood floors on your bottom level. Even if you have carpeting on the top, the energy of feng shui is more concentrated in the areas of which we live, which are the downstairs areas of a home if you have multiple floors. Does that make sense? It does, and it led me beautifully into my next question was, um, uh, ranch style homes with which are one level uh, versus multi-level stores to where, uh, homes that are two and three tiers are there any pros and cons to those sometimes with a ranch style home because it's such a long home it's not like square like the bagua right right you're missing you're missing elements of uh, from the bagua in your home so you have to use uh what you have to energize those areas so say you have um say you walk into a home and then out of the back of your home is a patio like mm -hmm. directly in the back that would be in the fame and reputation of your home but your patio doesn't take up the length of your entire house so that means your wealth and prosperity area and your relationships and partnerships areas are lacking Whatever part inside your home is closest to that, you must kind of double the energy in order to receive the benefits. Does that make sense? Like to, to really receive the benefit. Gotcha. Gotcha. So sometimes homes are, are harder because they don't have all the elements of the back wall, but all that means is we're just going to use another area of your home to energize that space. So in a way, if you understand this process, if you learn this practice, um, it, it will help you select your new home in, in a sense, right? Yes. You don't want your floor, like looking at your floor plan beforehand is so important. The bathroom is kind of like the danger zone of the house. And this is the one thing I want to kind of make sure I get across to people in feng shui. When you are not using your drains, make sure that they're covered at all times so that the energy that you are creating and manifesting in that space doesn't go down the drain. Hmm. It's very wow. profound. I never so heard that. If your in your wealth and prosperity, yeah, if your bathrooms in your wealth and prosperity area of your home and all of your drains are uncovered, all this energy that you're trying to create that's positive and good and and uh, is going to go down the drain because it's not covered. So you mentioned elements before. Toilet seat down, men. Men keep the toilet seat down. Wait, wait, say that one more time. Men keep the toilet seat down. Oh, okay. Okay, and and, and that the, the same principle, right? Yes. Of why you do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Going down the drain. You know what? If more if women knew that and explained it that way, I think men would get it more than just put it down because I might sit down and go, you know fall in so money is more important than courtesy is what you're telling me <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm here ladies i'm looking out for us right now money is more important than courtesy for men great great to know great to know i mean uh <laughs> next question uh <laughs> I, I teach, I teach. so you mentioned elements and you were talking about metals woods and 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 and, and plastic it well, went out plastic but uh, the elements earth um I, my question is uh, similar to the hardwood and carpet question. Are, are metals worse than woods or does it, it matter? 
Well, it depends on what your uh, on what the room is and what you're trying to energize and reflect. So metal. Um, or let me let me actually use the the elements of water and fire. Okay. As a great example, because people don't think about this too much. When your kitchen stove is right across the street from you, right across the street, is right across from your sink, there's a fire and a water element that are at battle. In order for one and not the other to overwhelm the other one, in order for one to not overwhelm the other, you must have some sort of earth in between them, right? Hmm. Because Earth kind of slows down a flame and it kind of slows down the water or, or extinguishes it. So if your kitchen stove is right across from your sink, then you put some sort of green element, maybe like a green rug in between. Hmm. Does wow. that make sense? It does. Make sure all of your burners on your stove work because that's what feeds you and fuels you. If only two of your burners are working, it's kind of like a money thing, right? If your if your if your if your uh, refrigerator is leak, leaking water, that's working against your prosperity. So you, it's just like making sure that whatever elements that you have are working in favor of what it is that you're trying to accomplish. You don't want certain elements around other elements, which is why in the back lot, it's they're not everything's not all water or all earth or, or you can put anything anywhere because they try to extinguish distinguish extinguish one another does that make sense it does uh i i'm laughing because at growing up i remember i don't think it was one time growing up that all the burners worked <laughs> at one time so that's just was life hard was life hard it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. Uh, wow, that, it just made me laugh because I, I remember those days, and now it's like, okay, see, mom, you should have had the, the burners working. Um, so the next question I want to ask, kind of, is um, revolving around what you bring into the home, because we all, uh, at some point of the day, well, at least majority of us, so say we're going to work and coming back from work, right? We're, we're um, hopefully leaving with positive energy and sometimes we, we're not in a positive workspace so we may have some negative things happen out there in the world and then we're about to come back and bring that energy into our home. Is there something that we can do on a day-to-day -day basis that we think about to leave that energy outside of our home and not bring it in is there what are the practices i know in uh one of the things that uh that culturally um uh in asia uh that they do primarily is they remove their shoes uh before walking into their home so is there anything like that that we can do that just slows down the negative vibration or energies that we're bringing back on a daily basis i'm one of those people you have to remove your shoes before coming in my home you have to. Um, the things are, a lot of people want to sage themselves when they get home. What I tend to tell a lot of people to do is to take a shower when you get home. To really wash away and release the day's energy when you get home, if need be. And then you change into your comfy clothes, your, your clothes of life, so that you can sit on your bed and sit on your furniture and not feel like you're sitting in the energy of whatever you came in with. That okay. wasn't so you're yeah. removing your shoes, saging yourself, or just you know putting a little sandalwood incense uh, out there, or taking a shower, or at least at the very least washing your face and your arms up to your elbows, your okay. arms and hands up to your elbows. So you mentioned um, incense, and I, and I, I likewise uh, on my my very nice mantle back here. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I'm like addicted to incense because I just I mean they just I found they put me in a different space even when I'm some, not conscious of it. So I, I I'm constantly burning them and I've got uh, various kinds for different moods and date times of the day, etc. How important is 
the um, olfactory um, of what we smell in our homes? Um, and are there better smells than others? Every, that's like a trick question almost. I think that there are better smells than others because my nose is designed to like certain things okay. that other people don't like. Um, I do know that there are certain scents that can evoke certain feelings that you would like. You know, lavender and rose uh, are very calming. Sandalwood is very, and sage, uh, white sage or anything like that are very cleansing. Uh, sometimes people just love the smell of incense in general and Nag Champa is a, a great one for that. So those are kind of, you know, my staples in my home. Anything else is extra that I just like. Sometimes people can't do incense because their nose, they're allergic to it or their nose don't like it or things of that nature. I always say get non-toxic hmm. candles instead if incense isn't something that works for you. But having different lighting sources, having different smells will evoke different feelings for different people. And whatever it is, you want it to feel like home and you want it to feel like um, happiness, positivity, and familiarity, whatever smells you enjoy. Because there are some that I don't enjoy. I don't enjoy lemon. I don't enjoy cinnamon incense, things like that. Like I don't enjoy, I'm one of the few people who doesn't enjoy a lemon incense. I'm like, no, so or a lemon can. So it comes back to, because you said this in a lot, it, ultimately it comes back to feelings, right? What, what it evokes for you and that feeling that, um, whether that smell is, because I know like old school, and you know, like our parents' parents, their thing was if it did smell like bleach and ammonia, it wasn't clean and therefore, you know, yes, sir. problems. <laughs> yes, sir. It comes down to what your personal preference is. Okay. Um, yeah. So likewise, um, what's, oh, oh, before I forget, I was wanting to ask this question. I always wanted to ask. I still don't know the answer. So uh, because <laughs> I've heard various things, does it matter if your bedroom is in the front of the house or the back of the house? Um, yes and no. It depends on how you set up your bedroom in your home is probably the best answer or the, the better question. So okay. if so if it's set up in the front of your home, then where is it spatially to the door? If it's set up in the back of the home, where is it spatially to the door, to the bedroom door? It does it have a bedroom door. Is it a studio? Where is it? Okay, if it's just a studio, make sure it's not in the straight frame line of the door. It's less about you can work with wherever your bedroom is as long as you know how to correct hmm. the place, which is feng shui. Correctly place your furnishings. Makes so sense. anyone who says it, it, it matters, they're right. And anyone who says it doesn't matter is right. But the safest answer, they're, they're both right, but the safest answer is it doesn't matter if someone's right or wrong, it matters how you place your furniture in that area. That's the, that's the real answer. So, so as you're walking into a place, you can correct any um, maladies you see in the home, um, there's a way to fix it. There's not, you don't have to say, well, you know, the first thing you need to do is you gotta move out of that room and into this room Correct. No. Sometimes I'll walk into a space and I'll go, and I always carry sage with me. Sometimes I'll walk into a space and I'll go, do you mind if I sage the space first? Because sometimes there's so much energy talking to me because there's normally people call you once they've given up, right? Normally people don't call you when they're already in the throes of change or wanting to change. Normally they call you when they want you to do it. And they're just like, I'm done. I give up. I don't even know what to do. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it. You right. know what I mean? Like, whatever. Right. Um, so I normally walk in and I'm like, okay, I, I know what needs to be done. And I take notes on it. And, and I make them actively participate 
in the change because that's the only way that it's going to stick. I like to think of feng shui or lifestyle entrepreneurs as, uh, especially feng shui and space clearing, as kind of like life coaches for your home. Do you know what I mean? We don't, yeah. and because it trickles over into your personal and your professional because of how you feel when you're in your home. So. And, and I so guess I don't, the, I, don't have to see you weekly. I don't have to see you weekly. Okay. Um, the last, I guess, major thing I want to touch on is lighting. Um, mm. How important is that? Because I, I go into homes where th it seems like they've never pulled back the curtains a day in their life, right? The curtains are drab and they're just down and they, there's no natural lighting in there. I would guess that natural lighting is probably the best lighting that one can have. But is is, is there a bad um, template for lighting uh, in certain areas or should certain areas be more lit than others? Is there any rules to that? Overhead lighting is just not our friends. Overhead. You know, it's not. Okay. It's just not our friends. Like so many fluorescent lights are just terrible. Um, it makes you it makes you look bad. It makes you feel bad. Um, I always tell people the what is it called? All of a sudden, I'm blanking. Uh, where you can control the light. A dimmer. It, the, a dimmer is a really good thing on a light, even if it's on a light that's a, a lamp, a floor lamp, you know, where you have multiple layers, it can go kind of light and then super right. heavy if you want it to. And candles are an amazing light source mm. and especially an amazing relaxation light source. And they do not have to smell. I often tell people if you're going to be an incense person, then your candles need to not, not smell. Okay. I'm like, here, or if you're going to be, you know, if you're going to have multiple incense, if you're just going to use one or two incense, then maybe you can have candles that smell. But it's more important to just give yourself different lighting sources and options because everybody doesn't need that big bathroom light to go on in the middle of the night. A night light is perfectly acceptable. It keeps the mood for you to go back to your relaxation or sleep. Lighting is really, really important. I think it affects more than any other asset, uh, more than any other aspect besides clutter, I think lighting is the most important after that. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's funny, you, I, you've you got to be right because you, you, I'll give an example. It's actually happened recently in my home, but I'm going to act like it wasn't my home. You know how you go okay. into a room and it's 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 had the lighting for whatever reason at, at, at a point where it's just been for months, but then you replace like two out of the three bulbs that were blown out and your kids say, wow, this looks much better in here. I never know. It's like, okay, shut up. But <laughs> something yes. as small as that and a, a child noticed it, then they're, they're, that tells you all you need to know, right? Right. Because light, light is, is one of those words that means a lot of things it, to illuminate, to um, also, you know, when you light, you're uplifted. Right. When you mm -hmm. feel light, you feel uplifted. So light can really change and transform. That's why when it gets dark at night, we become more quiet. We become, you know, the world gets quieter. The energy gets quieter. Darkness kind of shuts us in. Light is kind of a new day, a new beginning, hope. When you think of the word light. So light does play a huge part, a huge part. And I, I, I said that was going to be the last part, but I can't. We're in 2016, and I've got to let you address electronics. As I looked at my phone just now, yes. <laughs> because we are now electronic everything, right? I mean, it's, it's, it, and it's that quiet energy buzz that is around us consistently for, I mean, just, you know, it, it's, it's somebody once did a, an experiment, and I can't remember where I saw it on YouTube and they, they turned off all the electricity in the home and you notice it. Like you don't notice it until someone shuts, like shuts off that power source that is constantly around us. And all of a sudden you're like, Whoa, like where did it go? And, and I didn't notice it was there. So I would imagine the same effect has to be present um, around us, especially with people with cell phones and clocks and, computers and laptops and 
the lights are running currents of, in, of, of electricity out. So what role, how can we lessen the effect of electronics in our home? The first thing is, I love the fact that you asked me this question. Let me just say this, because I didn't even think about answering this until you said it. The first thing I would say is take the electronics out of your bedroom. First and foremost, the television, the laptops, that is your place of rest and relaxation. So if that's the very first thing you touch in the morning and the very last thing you touch at night, you are never off. You're always on when you're alert and you're awake and you never give your yourself the ability to recharge. So take the electronics out of your bedroom is what I would say. Unplug things when not in use. When my coffee maker is not in use, when my toaster oven is not in use, I unplug it. It's unnecessary energy flowing through your space. Um, and I would also say tie up your um, technology cords together. Meaning, when I say tie them up, meaning uh, have them all lined up together and maybe, you know, a, a twist tie or something kind of holding it all together so it's just not cords and energy strewn all together. Having uniform and keeping uh, televisions and electronics out of places that are not really meant for electronics and, and things of that nature, I think is really important. People who have electronics in their bathroom, that's, <laughs> you know, I feel like that's a, that's a place to refresh, to, you know, cleanse. You can't really do that when you have other energies coming at you in the bedroom. You can't really rest if your TV's on all night. You're watching in your subconscious violent programming because that's normally, or infomercials, that's normally what's going on in the night hours while we're sleeping. So just get rid of all the electronics out of the non-major rooms, unplug things that you don't need to use, and make sure all of your cords are tied up together. I'm so glad you said that because you just coached me. Uh, thank you, by the way. I owe you money because um, I I'm guilty as all outdoors. I will take my computer. I'll feel sleepy and I'm like, ah, maybe I can knock out a couple more things before I go to bed. So I'm always bringing it in there, and it is absolutely one of the first things I look at when I when I uh, arise each morning. So uh, I'm making a pledge to correct that. Um, because I believe it is part of the energy draining uh, process that we experience. And over time, boy, it'll catch up with you. And then you have no sense of self. You yeah. know, you need at least an hour a day. You know, a lot of times people will tell you meditate or just be quiet, be in a state of quiet for your first hour of the day. Who are you and what is it that you want outside of the expectations of technology, outside of what other people and other things want you to do and create in that day? Just take an hour and just as much technology as you can be off. Just take that time and really just figure out and remember and remind yourself who you are and what you want. It's important to disconnect a little bit. We're becoming robots a little bit. Well, thank you so very much. This is, you know, time flies when you're having fun. Um, it, just in conclusion, if you could just reiterate to our listeners um, and anyone who's listening to this in playback, that feng shui is not just a thing that you do. It is a way of life. It is. And it's consistency and it's um, uh, discipline. So I, I guess in order to explain feng shui, I would say this. Feng shui is not about um, destroying energy. It's about manipulating it in a positive way to evoke the change or the life that you yourself want to live and see. We all want to live positive, happy, prosperous lives. So in order to do that, you must maintain that. You can't just talk about intention. You have to do it. One of the things that people always talk about is, oh, well, how are we going to do this? Don't just talk about the how. Let's do and then see what happens. People like to talk and not do. Um, I would also say take away electronics when not in use. Um, make sure that you open your windows and let different energy and air come through. Don't just leave all the windows of your home uh, shut up because it's going to stagnate the energy that's there. Right. You have to open things so you can let energy move. Um, clean up. Listen, you don't have to be super duper clean. Your home should feel lived in, but it shouldn't feel 
messy. <laughs> really, Liam did. <laughs> you know, and yeah, you know, you can have a couple, you know, books on the table piled up together, but you know, you shouldn't have books and the, the newspaper from last week and mail and bills and baby pictures and everything just sitting there on the table. It's too much. <laughs> oh, you know what? Okay, so. Uh, how much time we got? Okay, we got eight minutes. So you mentioned see, you threw something else in there. Um, again, a practice that was used growing up a lot was putting up pictures of the family. Remember, mm -hmm. I know when I came up, every room had photos of everybody who I didn't know half of them folks. Um, not so much nowadays. We we have gotten out of that practice, you may have it on the mantle and stuff like that, but do, does that play a role or any of having photos or uh, of family members all over the place? Or we didn't talk about pictures. We didn't talk about what's on your walls. Does, you know, as far as adornment, how do those things play a role? If you come in a house and they've got photos and pictures and every wall has six different things on it, is that a problem or is it still about feeling? It's about feeling to a certain extent, but there is a such thing as too much, right? You want you want you you want artwork to accent, not overwhelm. So that's important. Pictures and photos are artwork. What's important about what's in those pictures and that artwork is it's positive reminders or affirmations or positive images of people or or situations. So if you love your grandmother. Put a picture of you and your grandmother during healthier times when you're smiling, not the picture of you and your grandmother in her hospital bed two days before death, which is a very sad time. Do you know, I, I know it sounds bad and you're laughing, but, but it's true. So you want the image of that person that you have to feel positive. So when you're putting up artwork, when you're putting up pictures, make sure it has a positive connotation. You don't want to put like angry pictures or pictures of people who are no longer in your life. There's mm. bad blood or things of that nature because that affects you too, you know? Pictures of times in your life where you were unhappy, take those down and replace them with good times and good pictures and good artwork. A lot of times my, my friends, because we are creatives, have a lot of like cool, dark artwork. And I'm like, okay, well, how do you feel when you look at this? And you're like, I feel cool and dark. And I'm like, well, <laughs> is it helping you? And they're like, no, but it looks cool. You know, I, I don't understand the point. If it's not something that's, that you feel good about when you look at it and you just think it's something that's cool, then maybe it's not the right art for you or maybe it's not in the right place or whatever the case may be. You have to be mindful about what you put up. Excellent. Because like I said, everything, everything, when someone walks into your home, that's your real business card. That's when people are like, okay, I know who you are. You know? Wow. Awesome. I've enjoyed this immensely. Um, before we get out of here, I got to, first of all, thank you so very much for taking time on a Saturday morning for you uh, to chat with us. Thank you for having me. And by all means, let everyone know how they can find you, how they can reach out to you for um, consultation, information, or just encouragement. Yes, you can. The two quickest ways are going on the website, which is www.feelslike-home.com. Because if you go to feelslikehome.com, I don't know who that guy is. That's not me. <laughs> so it, it's www.feelslike dash home.com okay. or you can contact me on gmail at contact feels like home all one word at gmail.com again contact at feels like home contact feels like home at gmail.com can't okay. necessarily assume that someone's going to get to the phone immediately because i might be in a feng shui session i might be driving i might be in a space clearing but if you email me or you go on my website i'll probably be able to get to you much quicker. And your social media um, platforms that you're on? The social media platforms I'm on are Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. 
we're creating the the social media right now for feels like home we're creating all of the visuals so we haven't made that live yet so when i come to see you again i'll i'll throw that information in my way perfect all right i'm looking so much for we're going to even have more fun when we run down the rabbit hole of my radio show because I'm, I'm, okay. I'm a lot more sillier than that one, if you can believe that. Uh, and we get to talk about your acting and the other great things that you've been doing um, for the last, I don't know, decade. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit. Yeah, that's a good, that's a, that's, that's a good number. Tip. That's a good starting point. So I just want to thank everybody who's been hanging out with us. And as you know, guys, if you miss any of this, you can go to my website at clarkgarrison.com. Of course, Clark is spelled a little different, K-L-A-R-Q-U-E, right here. Clarkgarrison.com, you'll be able to see not only who's coming up next, but the ones you've missed. We've had over, I think, this around 15, 16 people that I've had the opportunity to talk to and some very interesting discussions just like this one. So I want you to hang out with us actually tomorrow and you got to go to the website to see the time. We're going to make you work a little bit. But we're going to be talking about Tai Chi, the power of Tai Chi for not only I, I like to call Tai Chi my stuff like it's it's meditation while moving. So it's a really cool subject. We've got uh, Manifest Raw it's going to, out of the D.C. area. It's going to come on and spend an hour to talk to uh, many people listening who don't know what it is and have not practiced it. Uh, if you ever try it, you'll fall in love with it. I promise you. Uh, thank you so very much for hanging out with us. Remember, don't be average because it's the best of the the best of the worst and the worst of the best. You certainly don't want to do that or be that. So thanks so much. We'll see you next time.